<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. And before we get into this, I want to clarify a few things. First of all, I am aware by the time the video goes up that this conference had happened yesterday. The way I'm going to be doing this, uh, because I want to, you know, space out the uploads a little bit, but still have them come out, you know, at a reasonable time, uh, I'm going to be having this done after the Sony conference. Like, it will be uploaded after the Sony conference recap is uploaded, but at this point, while I'm recording this, I have not seen the Sony conference yet, so we'll see what happens. But anyways, I know I am late with uploading this, but bear with me, I want to still do my recap. So for anybody that does not know, what I normally do every year, whenever E3 week occurs, I decide to do recaps of the major conferences. Normally I don't do the specific publisher ones, but I do the consoles, and now I also do the PC gaming ones. So that would be, you know, Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, and PC gaming, whoever's heading it. This year it was Intel, but in previous years it was AMD, so we're going to be checking it out right here. And honestly, for the most part, I could say I thought it was quite well done. Now, before, like I remember the very first year they were doing their conference, I thought the conference was great. But there were so many things that were really thrown off. Nobody really knew what was going to be going on. We just knew it was going to be by AMD. We didn't know how long it was going to be. We didn't know when exactly it started. So I remember like I came to this stream like 30 or 45 minutes ahead of time and then I had to wait that long. And then the conference just kept going on and on. It was like a two and a half hour conference. It was great, mind you. It was a great conference. But it went on for too long and it just was not as best organized leading up to it. At this point though, because now it's standard just like all the other companies' conferences, They've done a good job. You know, they kept it at a reasonable pace. They It was about an hour, 45 minutes or so. I feel like they had a good amount of titles there, and we'll go ahead and get into that. The main thing is there's going to be a lot that I'm kind of skipping over, such as, you know, like XCOM 2, Cumberland. If I'm kind of looking over there, it's because I'm looking at my notes. Uh, there were a lot of titles that were announced or shown that honestly just really weren't my cup of tea. Not saying they're bad games, but, you know, I'm just not a big RTS type person. Uh, not really so much of the 2D sprite style RPGs. That's just not really my thing. Not to say that I will never play them, but I normally don't gun after them. So that was the thing, at least for me, that was a personal issue. There were a good amount of titles that I personally had no interest in. However, I still like the way they delivered this conference. They would bring up the game, they would bring up the developer, talk for a few minutes, and they'd go to another game. But there really wasn't a whole bunch of dead air. It was done quite well. And even when they focused on VR, a lot of people probably didn't want to see that all too much. The VR part was just a little bit odd just because it's hard to show how awesome VR is on a screen like this. It's it's unfortunate to do that. And then when you show people playing in VR, it just looks goofy, honestly. It looks awkward, it looks weird, it looks goofy. So it's hard to display that. And I think that's why they only really showed it for a few minutes out of this entire conference. But so far, some of the highlights I had, I'd like to go over the highlights of, you know, my favorite games that I'd seen. Since it was done by Intel, of course, Intel got to show off their i7X, their i9 Extreme. They were talking about that, but they didn't spend a whole bunch of time talking about it. They did bring other games and then all these developers and people were kind of talking about how Intel has helped them and such. But one of the big ones was actually Destiny 2. They didn't, I was disappointed, they really didn't show any gameplay for this. And then they brought up... <sighs> Another thing I was disappointed with with this, not so much a reveal, but with this part of the conference when it came to Destiny 2, was that they were talking about, oh yeah, you know, with Intel, now the way that the engine's been designed, it's going to utilize as much of every single core as possible in your CPU, which is cool, don't get me wrong, but they didn't bring up any developers or anybody from the publishing studio. They brought up a Twitch streamer, which personally I've never heard of. He's also a YouTuber as well. This dude had... <laughs> He had the personality of Destiny 1.0, like the original one with Peter Dinklage. I <laughs> They could have brought up a better person, honestly. They could have brought up a better person, but it was cool we did get to know a bit more info from it there. Tunic also looked interesting. It looks kind of like a isometric, top-down style Legend of Zelda RPG with a fox in it. I love foxes in case you haven't been around the channel for a while or you don't see my hat. But I was getting tweeted this a lot on Twitter because people, they, they know I like foxes. So this game looks fun. I'm not sure if I'm going to play it because it's just, again, not really my style. But I'm all for foxes in games right now. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds got a ton of support, a ton of new stuff that's coming out on there. Microsoft also took the stage for a bit. I was disappointed they didn't bring out Phil Spencer like they had in previous years. But they spoke on Forza 7 saying that they had completely built it for the ground up and really showed the same trail that 
they did before. They showed kind of the same trailer of Sea of Thieves they showed in the Microsoft conference, but they got to talk about that. And interestingly enough, uh, they said that this was not being ported to PC. They were building, they, they had both builds, like the PC and Xbox One builds, being developed at the same time. So, although that's kind of a given since it's x86 architecture, it is nice to know that the PC version isn't an afterthought, and also vice versa for Xbox One owners and players, that the Xbox One version isn't just an afterthought. Now, one game that we did see at the Microsoft conference very briefly, which one of my main concerns with the Microsoft conference is that we just got to see teasers of games. And this is one of those teaser games that was the last night. We got to see more of it. We got to speak with the developer. And oddly enough, he actually ended up apologizing for some tweets he made years before. And it was just kind of awkward because he's like, yeah, I, I apologize for these. And they know they in no way represent where I am now or the game or the company. I actually looked this up. And for anybody that doesn't know, I guess he was pro Gamergate and he still might be. But at least when Gamergate was happening, he was pro Gamergate. And then when this reveal ended up happening yesterday, he caught some flack for it on Twitter. So that's why he ended up apologizing publicly for it. I know there were some people online who were saying that it was silly he had to apologize for it, but it's 2017. Now, the one time they really did focus on VR was for two games, it seemed like, Lone Echo and Echo Arena. It seems like these are going to be releasing at the same time they're from the same company, but two different games. One of them is a single player game, and it seems like it's going to be a type of space horror first person game. But we don't really know too much about it, we just know it's a mind-blowing experience, while as the other game, which is Echo Arena, is really going to be focusing on esports and it's supposed to be competitive, it looks cool, and apparently Intel's going to be giving out a bunch of copies of it as well too, for a limited time when it comes out, because they said they want to pump this with as many players as possible, because they're also trying to, they were making esports e more of a focus with this conference, really saying that they're now going to be giving esports places and, you know, events the best Intel hardware so you'll be gaming on the best when you're doing this which I kind of find ironic because I don't know too much about esports but one of the things I do know is most of the time people who are playing professional PC games like in esports tournaments and such they turn the settings way the fuck down not all the way down maybe but they turn them down well enough so that they could see everything it's easier to look at stuff and that way they're not going to be utilizing any system resources so that's also a fun fact for you all as well too in case you didn't know so you all might have thought that you know when you're playing professionally you dial the settings all the way up no it's actually the opposite it's better to dial them all the way down now the other few games i was really interested in lawbreakers actually looks really cool this is the most i've seen of lawbreakers so far there are going to be there's going to be a closed beta happening june 28th and an open beta happening june 30th and i believe they said august 8th is when the uh, release date is going to be and it's going to be 30 dollars on ps4 and pc it looks really cool, so I was thinking it was just kind of going to be Cliffy B's version of Overwatch. Kind of looks like that, except a lot more intense. It looks like a really awesome kick-ass PvP game, so uh, I might try that out at one point, especially at $30. That's really good price on that, but be warned, it's online only, so if anybody's won kind of a single-player thing, no, it's an online-only type game. I like to see how good of support it gets as well, too. They also had Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which we have seen already at this conference, but they decided to show all new stuff that we had not seen at the PC gaming conference as opposed to the Microsoft conference. And then finally, the big thing that they were keeping tight under wraps was an Age of Empires 20-year anniversary remake, where they said they end up remaking everything, the sound, the graphics, everything from the ground up. Personally, I did not play Age of Empires, but I can definitely respect this. I know it has a lot of nostalgia with a lot of people, so that's going to make tons of people quite happy. I can foresee that selling super well if they sell it for like $20 or so. There was another game that came out. It wasn't, I don't know if it was Age of Empires, but there was another Age of type game where several years ago they ended up making Anniversary Edition. They put it on Steam for like 20 bucks, and it sold exceptionally well, so... I know that's going to be a really nice fan service for a ton of people. Honestly, though, I think, as I said, with this conference overall, I think it was a very solid conference. I'm going to talk about Microsoft's conference a little bit because I can't help but compare, but I feel like this is what Microsoft should have done. Now, I know some people were saying, oh, people have been complaining that Microsoft should just have games, just have games, and I understand. Actually, kind of helps out here, too, because now most of the games they were showing were 
Windows 10, Xbox One, so it wasn't just an Xbox One conference. So I feel like this is a little bit appropriate to talk about in this recap right here. But this right here, this standard, I feel like this is what Microsoft should have been doing. They show the game, they introduce it, they bring up the developer, they have some footage, they move on to the next game. So every single game gets a few minutes, but you still have a large chunk of games available. While as Microsoft's was more just, look, we have all these games, 30 second trailer, 30 second trailer, 30 second trailer, 30 second trailer. And it was so overwhelming that it was disappointing. That's the best way I could say it, because you didn't learn a lot about them. While as with the PC gaming conference, you really feel like you get to know the developers, the publishing studios, how the game is going to be, all that other fun stuff. So overall, I thought this was good. I felt like it was more professional than other years. I felt like there were other years where there was more cussing, it was more laid back, um, there were a lot more jokes. The humor was still on point from day nine. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoy him as a host and I think he does an excellent job, but it seems like it's growing up now a little bit. Like the first year, they had, they were setting the bar at this point, so they could do whatever the hell they wanted to, but now at this point, they gotta be professional, they gotta dress up and, you know, tone down the language. In fact, the only person I really remember doing a ton of cussing was Cliffy B, but I think that's just Cliffy B cl being Cliffy B. Anyways, let me know what you all thought of the PC gaming conference. Was there anything that really stuck out to you that thought that was awesome? Did you love the conference? Did you hate the conference? I'd like to know what you thought. Anyways, a like would very much be appreciated if you enjoyed this video. If you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. It's